Hello and warm welcome to 8 on Play on Northeast Sports Time. Our weekly sports bulletin from DD Sports. This is your one-stop destination to catch a quick glimpse from the world of sports in this part of the country. I'm Prarthana Hajorika. In this edition of the program, the Highlander starts off the ISL season with a superb performance, restricts title champion Bengaluru FC to a draw in its opening encounter. Head of Cricket Operations of BCCI, Sabah Karim, says that a job cut out for the newly constituted body led by Saurav Ganguly has a tough one with plenty of challenges to face and indigenous games in Nagaland witness keen participation from all these and more lined up for your exciting viewing in the next half an hour. But before moving ahead, a quick look at the headlines. Northeast toward Bengaluru FC in goalless state in its first encounter in ISL. Both Bengaluru FC and Northeast United FC had clear card opportunities at goal, but Prol Figeshi in finishing cost both the teams in the opening ISL duel. Ace boxers from Assam, Lavlina Borgohai and Jamuna Bora return back home to a rousing welcome after sharing the podium honours in the World Championship in Ulan Ure, Russia. Stepping into an uncharted area, NCC Directorate Shillong embarks on a pioneering project to contact the first ever sailing expedition, the Brahmaputra, in the entire northeastern region. Welcome back, our top story. There were the frills for clear goal opportunities and a multitude of half chances. But the defending champion Bengaluru FC had to be content with a goalless draw against Northeast United FC in its opening Indian Super League campaign at Sri Kantarava Stadium in Bengaluru. Despite a slow start, the Highlanders gave a fright to the host through Uruguay's Martin Chavez Garcia and the Ghana's Asamoah Gyan to walk away with a point from the fortress. Both Bangalore FC and Northeast United FC had to clear cut opportunities at goal, but Prol Figesi in finishing cost both the teams in their opening ISL duel. We have more details coming up in this compilation from El Arnachanu from Didi Guwahati. We welcome you again to the Sri Kanjarava Stadium in Bangalore for this epic game between the champions. Bengaluru and Northeast United, who tasted finals football for the very first time last season. And that is the signal that we love. Bengaluru in the blue, in possession in their traditional strip. Bangalore FC and Northeast United kick-started the Indian Super League ISL season with a goalless draw on Monday at the Kantivira Stadium in Bangalore. The defending champions swapped their traditional 4-2-3-1 to the classic 4-3-3 with new signing Manuel Onwu spearheading the attack alongside Sunil Chetri and Udanta Singh. Robert Jarni fielded a 4-4-1-1 at the other end with Asamoah Gyan and Martin Chavez leading the attack. Oh, that's a wonderful run. It's the best moment of the game. From the former FC Pune City youngster, what a run this was. Fantastic bit of uh, dribbling over here. Just taking players on, using his pace. Just for, lacked a little bit in the end, a little bit of composure. We've seen him slotting in from there against Chennai last season. Udanta struck the body. Dimas goes for goal. There's a scramble and a miscued attempt. That was the hosts moment. started the game on the front foot enjoying the lion's share of possession in the opening minutes. But a pale front line undid most of the efforts of a creative midfield. Their first real chance of the game arrived in the 14th minute with Rafael Agosto setting up on Wu. But his touch let him down and the promising move failed to bear fruit. Ashik followed it with a brilliant run just moments later as he burst into the Northeast United box dribbling past two defenders. But he dragged his effort wide. At the other end, Martin Chavez tested Gurpreet Singh Sandhu with a tremendous effort from outside the box. But the Bangalore custodian produced an equally impressive save to deny the Uriuru Duen. At the very least, Chavez should have forced Gurpreet into a save. And momentum switching at the moment. It's with Northeast. Looking for Asimov Yanu's offside. Exquisite finish. It won't count. It won't count. Just caught out. 
Ghana legend Gyan, who was a spectator for most of the game, slotted past the Indian goalkeeper in the 36th minute, but the offside flag went up and the scoreline stayed 0-0. Oh, Chetri can't believe it. We'll have to have a look at that again, but that was a glorious opportunity for Sunil. Sulashish, who got the start today ahead of Bowen Kumar in the goal for North East United. And Samar Jan's first foray in the Hero Indian Super League, Chetri. Bengaluru will be on the road in Goa. Bangalore dominated possession yet again in the opening moments of the second half, but lacked a cutting edge in the final third. Eventually, it was Gyan who was involved in the first eye-catching moment of the second half as his curler from inside the box struck the crossbar before it went out. It could have been the breakthrough goal from the superstar Asamoah Gyan. A quick counter-attack. The best way was to go to the free player inside and his delivery... At the other end, Nishu Kumar unleashed a pile driver from outside the area, but northeast custodian Shubhashish Chaudhary reacted with a stunning save to keep the defender at bay. In the end, a draw was a fair result with Bangalore's wasteful front line and northeast's pale midfield cancelling each other out. And at the end, one can sum up that the defences stood firm as Bangalore and northeast dropped points in their first game of the season. And the centre-backs have really done a job, haven't they, on the set pieces today. That will be basically it, I would think. The four minutes has elapsed. Now the referee, Mr Venkatesh, signals full-time. Moving on, ace boxers from Assam Lavlina Borgohai and Jamuna Boro have returned back home to a rousing welcome after sharing the podium honours in the World Championship 2019 that was held in Russia. Both the boxers who were invited to the studios of Didi Guwahati shared the unique experiences with the viewers in Doordarshan, Guwahati's special live telecast programme, Krirangan. Assam's Lavlina Borgohai and Jamuna Boro had settled for bronze medals after they moved till the semi-finals of the AIBA World Boxing Women Championship held in Russia. We have this report from our producers Bishwa Kumar Das and Gautam Sharma from Didi Guwahati. It was one of their first visits back home after returning from Russia. Two of the best women pugilists from Assam, Lavlina Borgohai and Jamuna Boro visited Doordarshan Guwahati on Tuesday afternoon for a purpose. On their arrival, members of the recreational club of the Kendra gave a traditional welcome to the young boxers. Soon, the duo settled with our anchor, Prathana Hazarika, for a tete a tete in the studios of Dutajan Guwahati for a special live telecast program, Krirangon. Sharing their unique experiences, both Lavlina and Jamuna spoke of the odds and their trials and tribulations before the podium finish in Ulan Ude, Russia. Ace pugilists from Assam performed creditably in the AIBA World Boxing Championship in Russia recently. They were coasting along smoothly until they were halted in the semi-final round. In semi-finals held in Russia, Lavli Naborgohai went down fighting to China's Yang Liu, while Zhou Naboro lost to Huang Hsiao Wen of Taiwan. At the end, Assam's Lavli Naborgohai and Zhou Naboro settled for bronze medals after being halted in the semi-finals of the AIBA World Boxing Championship in Russia's Ulan Ude. Lavlina Borgohai, who hails from Assam's Golaghar district, was defeated by China's Yang Liu in the 69 kilogram category in a split decision of 2-3 to end her campaign at the AIBA World Boxing Championship. However, she was able to win bronze medal for India. Lavlina Borgohai lost 29-29, 29-28, 27-30, 29-28, 28-29, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 29-30, 
It may be mentioned that in the 2018 edition of the event, Lovelina won bronze medal for India. On the other hand, Jauna Boro, who hails from Assam's Dhekia Zuli under Sonitpur district, also settled for bronze after her defeat in the semi-final match of the AIBA World Boxing Championship. However, this was the first senior World Boxing Championship for Jamuna. Jamuna Boro lost 5-0 to Huang Hsia Wen of Taiwan in the 54 kg category. Jamuna went down 28-29, 28-29, 27-30, 27-30, 27-30 to Huang Hsia Wen. Later, talking to DD Sports, both the boxers said the World Championship was a huge experience and they will put up their best efforts with renewed focus and commitment for bringing laurels to the state and the country. First of all, congratulations. Dono ko bahut bahut badhai. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lavina, ye aapka back to back second medal hai World Championship mein aur Jamuna aapka bhi seniors mein pehla ye ek medal hai. Kaisa lag raha hai? बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है ये मेरा पहला सीनियर वर्ल्ड चैम्पियनशिप था और पहली बार में मैंने ब्रॉन्ज मेडल लिया मुझे बहुत खुशी हुई और जितना मेहनत किया था इतना काम आया और आगे जब नेक्स्ट बन खेलने जाएंगे तो हम पहली बार में इतना अच्छा कर सकता है तो ऑब्वियसली नेक्स्ट टाइम में और अच्छा कर सकते हैं और ज़्यादा मेहनत करेंगे लवलीना कैसा लगा आपको फिर से आपको एक मेडल मिला वर्ल्ड चैंपियनशिप में लास्ट एडिशन न्यू दिल्ली में था और इस बार तो रशिया में तो कैसा अनुभव रहा लास्ट टाइम मेरा ब्रॉन्ज था तो मैं इस बार सोच के गई थी कि मैं इस बार कलर चेंज करना है मुझे गोल्ड लेना है और फिर लेकिन मेरा सेमीफाइनल में चाइना के साथ लॉस हुआ लेकिन मेरा बहुत क्लोज बाउट था तो मैं अपने गेम से सेटिस्फाई भी हूँ कि मैंने उसके साथ अच्छा खेला लेकिन नेक्स्ट टाइम मैं और कोशिश करूंगी कि उसको और ज़्यादा मारूं कि वन साइडेड डिसीजन हो फिर उसे आगे के लिए तैयारी करूंगी और अभी गुड लक थैंक यू लेटर द रिक्रिएशन क्लब ऑफ दूरदर्शन गुवाहाटी फेलिसिटेटेड द डूवो फॉर देयर स्टुपेंडस एफर्ट्स इन द वर्ल्ड ऑफ बॉक्सिंग बोथ लवलीना एंड जमुना शेयर सम ऑफ द लाइटर मोमेंट्स ऑफ लाइफ एंड हैव प्लेंटी टू ऑफर इन टर्म्स ऑफ द राइट ऑप्टिक्स Extending best wishes to the ace pugilists from Assam in all their future endeavors, members observed that the performance of the boxers in the World Championship in Russia have made everyone proud in the Northeast. This will help in inspiring all the budding boxers of the state and the region. I have heard that in New York, in the future, our homeland, as it is now, our homeland is going to be proud. I have heard that in the future, our সকলো আমাৰ যি সকল কনমানি আছে তেওঁলোকে আদৰ্শ স্বৰূপে তোমালোকক লৈ পেলাই আগবাঢ়ি যাব নিশ্চয় সৰু সৰু সপোন এটা আছে টকিঅ' টেকিং ফ্ৰম নিশ্চয় না অলিম্পিকত পদক আনিব লাগিব Stepping into an uncharted area, NCC Directorate Shillong embarked on a pioneering project to conduct the first ever sailing expedition in the entire northeastern region earlier this week. Brahmaputra has been selected for this ambitious initiative using the expertise available with the military personnel of NCC. The focus of this expedition is to revisit the famous Battle of Horaighat that was fought in 1671 and to rekindle the memories of the epic bravery of the son of the soil of Assam. While fostering a spirit adventure among the youth, we have this report from our producer Partho Chakraborty from Didi Guwahati. A 10-day sailing expedition on the river Brahmaputra organized by the National Cadet Corps was flagged off at Vishwanath Charyali, almost 250 kilometers from the Assam capital, Guwahati, on Wednesday last. The expedition on the Brahmaputra from Vishwanath Charyali to Guwahati has been organized under the aegis of the NCC Directorate, Shillong, to commemorate the exploits of the great Ahom warrior general, Lachit Porpukan. Ahom general, Lachit Porpukan, led the Battle of Saraighat and defeated the Mughal army. In a first of its kind of a riverine adventure activity in the northeast of India, the sailing expedition has been undertaken by 60 NCC Naval Wing cadets of the northeast region. The expedition was flagged off by Major General Pipin Bakshi, Additional Director General of the Northeastern Region NCC Directorate, on Wednesday from Vishwanath Ghat amidst a grand fanfare. Pramod Bhortakur, MLA, Vishwanath Charyali, handed over the flag to the expedition leader. A colourful cultural programme by NCC cadets preceded the flagging of ceremony. The function was attended by Brigadier K.S. Rao, Group Commander, NCC Group, Tezpur and the SP of Viswanath Chaliari.
While briefing the media, Major General Bipin Bakshi said, the aim of the expedition is to rekindle the memories of the epic bravery of the sons of the soil of Assam while fostering a spirit of adventure amongst the youth. Double, triple, par karenge, lekin hum turnover karke, total about 60 cadets ko hum anubhav denge. Sir, kahan tak jayenge yahan se? Yahan se shuru karke, hum log Pandu Ghat Guwahati mein ja rahe hain, jahan ke Chief Minister, Minister, Honorable Chief Minister, inko receive karenge 25 tarik ko. Sir, sir, in logo ko sir training diya hai? Humne pichle do mahine se kara training diya hai, sailing ke baare mein bhi, chappu chalane ke liye bhi, aur teraki mein bhi, taake galti se koi haadsa ho, to it will bring to fore the rich heritage and remind the present generation of the valor displayed by the great Ahom General Lachit Borpukan and the first lady freedom fighter from Assam, Mata Kanaklata Barua, in the true tra traditions of the rich history of Assam, said Major General Bakshi. <laughs> जहां ये एक्सपेडिशन हम खत्म कर रहे हैं वहीं पे 1671 में बैटल ऑफ सराय घाट हुआ था जहां के अहोम किंगडम के जनरल हैं लचित बर्फुकन उन्होंने एक छोटी सेना को लेके मुगल आर्मी की बड़ी सेना को खरास्त किया था मुगल सेना लौट गई उसके बाद कभी मुड़के इस एरिया में मुगल सेना नहीं आई थी सर इसका मकसद हम इसमें इस हमारे पूर्वज जो भी जनरल रहे हैं उनको याद करेंगे बच्चों को हम यह ट्रेनिंग दे रहे हैं कि वो कोई भी चुनौती का सामना करना सीखें कैसे ऐसी चुनौती भरे काम के लिए तैयारी करना है ट्रेनिंग करना है अपना लॉजिस्टिक और एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन प्रिपरेशन करना है और आगे जाके एक बहुत ही कठिन कार्य को कैसे पूरा करना है द एक्सपेडिशन टीम विल रीच पांडू पोर्ट इन गुवाहाटी ऑन अक्टूबर 25 and the flagging in ceremony will be presided over by the Chief Minister of Assam. The expedition will involve sailing over 210 kilometers in a period of 10 days. During the expedition, the team will halt at Tezpur, Silghat, Singri, Kathali, Palaguri, Titimara, Kurua, and Amingao, amongst a few others, it added. To make this expedition more purposeful, the cadets, in collaboration with the principal conservator of forests, Assam, will also spread awareness about the dangers to River Brahmaputra and its marine life and the role of riverine population in protecting it. The expedition has been envisaged to inculcate a spirit of adventure, leadership and the team spirit amongst the NCC cadets, who were selected after a thorough selection process. The selected NCC candidates have been undergoing training for a period of over one month involving seamanship, communications, swimming, safety drills and first aid. हम लोग ये पे 10 दिन ट्रेनिंग किया अमीन गांव में कितना दिन 10 दिन 2 दिन 10 दिन 10 दिन 10 दिन 10 डेज ओके कैसा लगा ट्रेनिंग करके अच्छा लगा अच्छा लगा क्या क्या सिखा आप लोगों ने यहां पे वहां पे आपने हमने पुलिंग सिखा सेलिंग कैसे बांधते हैं सब कुछ सिखा हम लोग सिखाए पे स्टेप में सिखाया बोटिंग के बारे में जैसे बोट कैसे लगाते हैं इसका कैसे कटे उसके बारे में बताया एनसीसी है 48 का यहां पे हम लोग अमीन गांव में वो ट्रेनिंग करते थे कितना Maybe two months, I think two months ki training wahan pe. Wahan pe ye board hacking ke baare mein jo jitna information hai, wo sab diya gaya. Kaise kya karte hain, kya kaise vote smart jo chalate ho lete hain. Ye sab ke baare mein wo chiz sikhaya gaya. Kaise laga training karke? Training karke bahut acha laga. A state-level indigenous game competition was recently held in Nagaland. It may be mentioned here that indigenous games of different tribes vary in many aspects and have their own significance and impact in the society. Nagas take pride in playing the indigenous game and also to teach the younger generation to learn before all it is lost. The competition portrayed the rich cultural heritage of the Naga society and also helped to enlive the all game once played by the forefathers. The event for this year's competition were tug of war, stilt bamboo race, cockfight and grease bamboo pole climbing. We have this report from Mrs. Silo says from Didi Kohima and Stringer.
Looking at the all-round participation and the deep involvement of the participants, one will be immediately impressed with the presentation of Naga Indigenous Games. These games form an integral part of the rich culture and tradition as well as the identity handed down by the forefathers to the people of the state. After witnessing a demonstration of Naga indigenous games, one can feel that such indigenous games should be promoted as it forms an integral part of the culture and tradition of Nagaland. The first village-level traditional game was held recently at Konoma village in the capital Kohima in Nagaland. The game was organized by Konoma Students' Union, KSU, in order to let the students emphasize more on traditional games and learn more, which were played during the olden days by the forefathers of Konoma village. The games that were played include go-kart wrestling, stilt bamboo walking race, and crawling with pole on back. In crawling with pole on back, the first position was backed by Kesa Sevi from St. John Bosco School, JBS, Konoma, while second and third positions were backed by Tujoyevi and Rokoshto, both from Christian Welfare School, CWS, Konoma. <laughs> In wrestling category, Nurhezoko Wisho from Government Primary School, GPS, Kono Tevo Konoma emerged as the champion, while second and third positions were backed by Rovivotso Yaletsu and Dize Viko Sei, both from CWS, and Merogindei Punni from JBS, who bagged the fourth position. In Bamboo Stilt Walking Race, Mego Keso and Teja Selhu bagged first and second positions, both from JBS, while Kedol Huzo Chase bagged the third position from CWS. <laughs> Altogether, six schools from Konoma village took part in the first traditional games 2019. Manipur with a rich haul of 6 gold, 3 silver and 9 bronze medal claimed the overall team title of the Sub-Junior and Cadet National Judo Championships which was organized by Manipur Zudo Association in Indoor Stadium Kumal Lampak under the supervision of Zudo Federation of India. Manipur's Ning Shui Toy, Laishtham and Sriri Kumar of Gujarat were named best judokas in the girls and the boys section in a Sub-Junior category as Assam's Basumatari and Harsh Chetri of Delhi were just cadets, best judokas in the girls and the boys section. We have more details coming out in this report from our producer M. Kiran Singh from DD Imphal. Big time judo action returned to the northeastern city of Imphal, Manipur as the 2019 National Sub-Junior Judo Championship was held at the Kuman Lampak Indoor Stadium recently. Altogether 869 players, 456 boys and 413 girls along with 126 officials from 30 states are taking part in the national championship. In the 52 kilogram cadet girls final, Maharashtra A's Priyanka Kasturi won the gold, beating Kerala's Sabitamo, while Urmila Shah of Odisha and Ashwini Solanki of Maharashtra bagged the bronze medals. 
Pooja Pasumatari from Assam won the 57 kg gold, beating Haryana's Ritu in the final, while Harlan Kaur of Punjab and Delhi's Muskan settled for the bronze medals. Unnati Sharma of Uttarakhand won the 63 kg girls gold, beating Delhi's Ribarawat in the final, while Jammu and Kashmir's Tazim Faiz and Manipur's Diana won the bronze medals. Manipur's last gold medal was earned by Santhoy Devi in the 70 kg event for cadet girls as she overcame Shruti Suniwala of Rajasthan in the final. Hina of Punjab and Jyoti of Delhi were able to win the bronze medals in this weight class. Manipur's K. Vishal was able to win a bronze medal along with Haryana's Vikash Dalal in the 73 kg Cadet Boys event as Mukul Singh of Uttar Pradesh and Rahul Solanki of Delhi won the gold and silver medals respectively. At the end, Manipur with a rich haul of 6 gold, 3 silver and 9 bronze medals claimed the overall team title of the Sub-Junior and Cadet National Judo Championships which was organized by Manipur Judo Association at Indoor Stadium Kuman Lampak under the supervision of Judo Federation of India. Manipur's Nungshi Thoi Le Shantem and Shri Kumar of Gujarat were named Best Judukas Girls and Boys in the sub-junior category as Assam's Basumatari and Harsh Chetri of Delhi were adjudged Cadets Best Judukas Girls and Boys. <laughs> With this, we come to the end of this edition of Northeast Sports Bulletin 8 on Play On. Thanks for joining us. We will be back next week on the same day and on the same time for another edition of the program. Till we meet again, stay healthy, stay sporty, and thank you for watching.